some people say, well, they're soft on crime. No, they're not soft on crime. They're pro-crime. They want crime. They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bull they are not owed that. That's a senator, a United States senator that's been elected to then apparently go to Trump rallies and claim that black people commit all the crimes. Uh, Democrats want are somehow crafting policies to set up reparations for those criminals because they're coming to take what you got. He said that they're coming to take what you got. Who is they and who is you? These folks that are surrounding him at this Trump rally, they are coming to take what you got and they wanna give reparations to those criminals. Because that's the problem in the country. So who's he talking about with all these, I wouldn't even call them dog whistles, direct shouts at his crowd. Well, he's talking about black folks, you know, those dirty criminals. They're coming to take everything you've got. What is this, 1942, 55, doesn't matter. They're trying to go back to those good old days. Uh, by the way, it's not just uh, Tuberville. This is a party wide problem. They just, th their problem is, is, hey, Donald Trump, hey, Tommy, calm down, you guys. We're supposed to hint at those things so that when black folks and other minorities say, hey, that's racist as hell, then we go, I don't know what you're talking about. I never said the N word. In fact, let's watch one of those people defend uh, Tuberville as he went on, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Meet the Press, to talk about this. Uh, it's Representative Don Bacon. Here's his ass. Are those comments appropriate huh. for a sitting US Senator, Congressman? Well, I wouldn't say it the same way, but there is a problem in our country with crime. Major cities have seen a 40 to 50% increase in violent crime. And the primary reason, in my view, is we have these far left prosecutors, county attorneys, and mayors who are releasing violent criminals back on the street. But Congressman, my opponent, Congressman, mm -hmm. there is a different way to say that. I mean, most people heard would be those more comments mm -hmm. and felt not just polite, but a lot of people heard those comments as being racist. Yeah, I'm, that's not the way I present things, but we got to be honest that we have a crime problem in our country. But, but do you feel we have as liberal though those prosecutors comments releasing cross a racial line, Congressman? Do they cross a racial line? I don't. I don't. I'm not going to say he's being racist, but I wouldn't use that language. Be more polite. But the fact is, we can't ignore. We have a 40 to 50 percent violent crime increase. And it's because Democrat politicians and prosecutors are putting violent criminals back on the street early, and it's unacceptable. He's like a, a, a repeat machine, 40, 50%, you know, 40, 50%, 40 to 50% hasn't decided where that 40 to 50% of a rise in crime that he's talking about is coming from. But he wants you guys to know, I wouldn't call Tuberville racist for saying that black folks commit all these crimes and that we're trying to put together reparations to give them what you got. How about we ask him one more time? Hey, Representative Bacon, do you agree with what he said? I wouldn't say it like that. I'd be more polite in my racism is what Don Bacon said. I would mask it more so that I could have some level of, of, of an escape route to get away from when people say, what the hell are you talking about, Don? He's like, no, 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 what, I, what I'm saying is, is that there's this rise in crime. I'm not gonna say it's all black people. I'm gonna let you guys assume that because we've always put that in place as the next step of this whole thing. It's very obvious, there's reason why people don't like these anti-Semitic tropes, which we're gonna get to later in the show from someone else. And it's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. We've just been saying this thing for decades, for centuries, it doesn't matter. But right now when you make that conclusion, I wouldn't call him a racist. What would you call him, Don? What would you call him, a good old boy? Would you call him a good Republican? Is he, do, you, does, do his values and his way of thinking align with yours? Because apparently they do. And you know, he was shifting right up to next before she interrupted him again. He goes, my opponent, that's what it all comes down to. Let's pump up the racism because we have to win elections. Now, folks who follow these guys, Republican voters, are you who they say you are? That's the question. Are they who they say you are? They say you're raging racist and you love this kind of talk. And when you cheer, it supports that very same thought. So are you, when you vote for Don Bacon, when you vote for Tuberville, do you agree with that that they say? What's your thoughts, Jessica? I'm sick of screaming at these guys already. Again, it's it's them trying to point groups uh, to hate each other, to pit groups against each other in our country. The problem here with reparations is that we have never collected the wealth distribution that was created and made askew because of slavery. We 
allowed slaves to be free in the United States. But we didn't do anything with the wealth that those plantation owners made and redistributed among the people. That's long overdue. There are long term consequences to that, one of them being a lack of economic opportunity in black neighborhoods in the United States. What does that lead to? It leads to people committing crimes of economic necessity. What does that lead to? It leads to people who are black in the United States of America disproportionately being put in prison and their behavior being criminalized because the 13th Amendment allows slavery to be legal as punishment for a crime. And what do we have in the United States? We have prison labor. It's just reimagined slavery. And so if there's nothing done to correct those systems, of course we're going to live in an America like the one we're living in today. But of course they're not going to point out the problems with the systems and why reparations are necessary and what the arguments are for and against them. It's much easier for them to just say they're coming for the things that are yours. And it's really sad because I think you're absolutely right that there is a base of people that will hear this and continue to vote for these people. So every time someone says, hey, if you support Donald Trump, support Tom Tuberville here, that you have to be a racist. And if you're not a rabid racist from your everyday thoughts and every everything you go about from your hiring practices to if you own a building and you're trying to rent someone out or any of this type of stuff in positions of power and opportunity giving, that's the problem. And many times it's based off our general conversation, how we've molded society to believe certain things about other people. This reason why I'm gonna play this last clip. Because also from Tuberville at that same event. He's talking about how they're coming for you. But there's these little things that they're always jabbing in. And we know the dog whistles that they're that they're blowing there at their audience to continue them thinking the same cycle of the bad guys over there and the good guys are here. You have to hate those people because we've generalized them into this one group. Watch this. Joe Biden has put double the amount of people on food stamps since he's been in office. He's doubled the amount. I want you to think about that. Double the amount of people that's on food stamps. We can't, first of all, you can't afford it and our country can't afford it. We're $31 trillion in debt. All these little things add up, but they continue want to give money out. People need to go back to work. So. To the same crowd that he told these reparations are coming from these Democrats to give to these criminal black people because that's what's happening. He says, and we also have to get people back to work because food stamps are on the rise and we keep giving them to the people that don't deserve it and all of that. You know what the real truth is? Here's some uh, some uh, some findings behind food stamps in the country. This is from the Food Research and Action Center. They broke down their support from the USDA. From a couple years ago, it said SNAP targets those in the greatest need. Among those participating in the program, most are children, elderly persons, or individuals with a disability. Do you think those are the people that uh, the folks listening to dumbass Tuberville were thinking of when he said all that? Continuing, in fact, 86% of all SNAP benefits go to households that include a child, elderly person, or a person with disabilities. 86%. In addition, about 92% of all SNAP benefits go to households with income at or below the federal poverty line. Get back to work. One more, SNAP recipients represent different races and or ethnicities. Since you're wondering about that, white about 37%, African American 26%, Hispanic 16% and Asian 3%, Native American about 2%. And about 16% of all these participants are categorized as race unknown. It's another part about this whole thing. So lastly here, Jessica, the one group of these welfare recipients that don't deserve it need to get back to work. Apparently include Brett Favre, remember this? Mississippi State Auditor says $70 million in federal welfare funds went to Brett Favre, a volleyball complex and a former pro wrestler in a scandal that rocked Mississippi that everyone has been talking about, but apparently not enough. But that guy isn't what's on Tommy Tuberville's mind. Tommy Tuberville, who was a college football coach who coached young black men, majority into whatever he needed to make his millions of dollars as a coach and how much did they get paid? It's almost like it all connects, huh? Can't stand this guy. It's the most obvious rhetoric that he's using, right? Saying that there isn't enough money to go around, we're in so much debt. Meanwhile, many people who are on food stamps work at places like Walmart, where Walmart gives trainings to their employees that are working 40 to 70 hours per week on how to get on government benefits while Walmart is bringing in billions and billions every 
fiscal year, it becomes very obvious what needs to happen to resolve the problems in our country. The monetary system needs to be used in a democratic way so that people can't fear monger and say there's not enough to go around when they're voting for trillions of dollars going to defense over the past few. And also public goods need to go to the people and corporations shouldn't be allowed to exploit people and price gouge. The problem is not that there's not enough to go around. The problem is that the wealthy people in the country have ensured the cash flows in their direction. It's very clear. Fight never to build and make sure it happens. It's, <laughs> it is what it is. And until you guys, until the folks that support people like this figure it out, they'll be the same part of that same victim group that they think is coming for them and take their stuff. You ain't got things to take. They've beaten you down too.